Hey, I'm Randy. I'm the Chief Audio Man. And today we're talking about the ELAC debut B5.2, second generation. If you're new here, though, subscribe. Uh, this may be the last day to get in on the uh, Clips R51M speaker giveaway. So I'm, when I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm giving them away. And that may happen today. It may not. If it doesn't, then go uh, watch the video. I'll link it in the description. Sign up. You know what? If you're watching this video and it's December, what is it? It's December 5th. Go ahead and enter yourself. I'll put you in it because I'm going to choose probably tomorrow. And I think we're going to hit a thousand either today or tomorrow. Anyway, enough with that. Uh, if you want to try high res streaming for free and you're in the US or Canada, I have a link down there. Click on the link and then scroll down and hit try HD. And then you can try it for free. You get like three, uh, three months for free. And I get a dollar, which helps the channel. I think that's just about it. Oh, it's the holidays if you're watching this when it when it's posted. So if you have like extra ten dollars, um, go buy a kid a set of headphones um, and then drop it off at I don't know some charity like Toys for Tots in the U.S. Otherwise, ten bucks. You know, give the gift of audio. It was very important to me. Uh, so yeah, with that, um, grab a grab a cup of coffee. Sit down, let's talk about the ELAC debut B 5.2s. I actually got these by accident. I ordered the, the B 6.2s and they sent me these. I got them as like an Amazon warehouse thing. So they sent me these and um, at first I was mad, I was angry like because I looked at the woofer I'm like that's there's no way and then I looked at the box and or I looked at the bag and it said 5.2s and then I looked at my order to make sure that I didn't make a mistake and indeed I did not make a mistake and um, then it occurred to me free speaker review because I'm returning these and so um, there's a silver lining to everything uh, what are the specs? They have a uh, five and a quarter inch woofer. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was the back because it's front ported and the other ones are rear ported. Anyway, uh, five and a quarter inch woofer. That's not as deep as some of them. Anyway. Um, and then a uh, soft dome tweeter is covered up by a grill. And I'm glad they're covered up by a grill because I have little kids like to do that go to any Best Buy and look at the speakers that are on display and look at the, the dust caps or whatever see how many are intact I would argue it's probably not very many all right they're rated at 46,000 or excuse me 46 Hertz up to 35,000 Hertz 86 DB at 8 ohms I drove them just fine off of everything 44 46 46 that's pretty low that's pretty low for a five and a quarter inch woofer I was skeptical because I think the the six and a half inch driver is only rated like it's only 44 Hertz so I was skeptical I'm like no way there's no way there's no way um, but we'll get to the base later uh, soundstage and imaging the original debut B6 was a sound staging savant or maybe he was like it was like sounds bipolar sense anyway it was everywhere and that is what I loved about that speaker from a sound perspective that speaker was rolled off a bit boomy in the bass but from an experience factor that I'd never had any experience like that with a speaker before. With these, they do soundstage well, but I can't get out of my mind the first generations and just how crazy it was. If I'm being objective about these, these soundstage very excellent and much more behaved and in line with other speakers. And when you compare it to other speakers, um, 
of this driver size and in its price category, they do as well, if not the best, out of the entire group. Okay, so the expectations have to be a bit different for me, be just simply because the first generation was so incredible with its sound staging. And I kind of thought that this was just going to be a tweak to the original. That is not true, okay, at all. Imaging is very good. These Andrew Jones speakers, the the off the off axis performance of these speakers is excellent, um, very excellent. With there's a caveat to that. If you don't particularly care for that speaker's sound, you it you don't have as many options to change it. Whereas in something that has poor off-axis performance, if it's too bright for you, you can simply tow it away from you. And oftentimes that will fix the, the problem. Or, you know, what you like. You don't like it as bright, so just don't point it directly at you. Uh, with a, with a well-done off-axis speaker, the sound doesn't change nearly as much. However, you can change it by putting the grills on. Um, if that's still too bright, you can put a piece of, I don't know, tissue paper in front of the in front of the uh, tweeter on the grill why not anyway imaging is excellent um something in the way uh by nirvana off of the mtv unplugged out of the left speaker at the beginning of that song one of the audience members coughs and bam you could just tell actually on these it kind of seemed like it was behind and right inside the speaker which is very good so depth of the sound stage is very good width is very good too extends slightly beyond the speakers wherever i may roam by metallica comes from the side and come uh, over and then there's a uh, just a little sound a little uh, ambient sound and it's it was way over to the right a good a good test for me is if I'm listening to the speakers and like the kids are home or the family's going on outside and if I'm turning my head because I think the family I think someone's outside good indication of off access performance and sound staging these did that okay oh every day is the same by uh, nine inch nails uh, that did a very good job too um, the Kef Q150 did that song better than I've ever heard it before. These didn't do it quite as well as the Kef, and it, what I was looking for is at the beginning there's a crescendo, um, and it was palpable on these, like you could taste it. On the Kefs, it was just like almost overwhelming, and it was something else, something else. Let's talk about bass. The bass is surprisingly very full, well-balanced, tight, well done, um, front ported so you have freedom of placement. You can put it um, closer to the wall if you have um, restraints, restraints or if you have a TV stand, you can put them on the TV stand. Bass on these is well done. I don't feel like it's boosted. I feel like it's well-balanced and it's full and kind of fast at the same time. That is, I think, the most surprising thing about this speaker is just how well the bass was, was done on this. Their original debuts um, lean, lean towards the boomy and sloppy side. And with rear porting, it could get quite boomy and sloppy depending upon how close it was to the wall. I didn't really mind that. Um, because I'm not like critically listening to the music. I listen to music for enjoyment. So that didn't really bother me that much, but this is a much more well-behaved and I would consider much more accurate bass while still being pleasing. Pleasing. I don't, I, I don't feel like I'm missing anything on the bass, even without a subwoofer. Now I did add a subwoofer and I'll talk about that in the final thoughts. But even without a subwoofer, these did as well as the best performers in this driver size and price 
category. These are $200, by the way, on sale. Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range is clean, full, and very balanced. It's gonna be kind of a reoccurring theme as how balanced these speakers are. Um, well, I don't think it's like as good as some other speakers in the mid-range um, for detail, um, but I don't think that's a bad thing because on those speakers, they're not as balanced as these speakers. From male vocals, acoustic guitars, into the female vocals, to me, this is the most consistent performing speaker I've heard in this price category with this driver size. Um, most consistent. Um, while there, there's nothing that's like knocks you over as being fantastic, um, with those speakers, there's always limitations. With this speaker, it's just well done, absolutely clean, absolutely balanced. Um, no, t no, no color. It just sounds like what I perceive the music to sound. Now, I wasn't there when it was recorded, so how would I know? But when I listen to, like, I go to a concert, listen to the music, uh, go home, buy a live uh, version, uh, a live concert of that band, and listen to it. And if it sounds how, if it sounds how I remember the concert sounding, then I would consider that neutral. Um, and that's what I really go for with occasional bump in the bass. I like a little bit of thickness. Um, so these do that. Are you going to see right into the music, like super clear and stuff? No, there's other speakers that do that better, but for $200, I don't think there is. Let's see if I wrote anything else down. No, I mean, I did, I, I test it with the usual subjects. Um, Chris Cornell, Alanis Morissette, um, James Hetfield, because he's awesome. Let's talk about trouble. Trouble can get a bit bright. On these and because of its because of its off-axis performance it is a bit harder to mitigate that treble brightness treble brightness comes in at louder volumes I would say upper 70 DB to the low 80 DB it can get a bit bright to be fair a lot of speakers in this category do the same thing at lower volumes this is going to be a very pleasing sound okay so don't think oh my gosh it's super shouty and trebly um, at higher volumes it can be it can be it being a little bright actually surprised the heck out of me simply because the debut of first gen I would say were rolled off and not in an insignificant way. I think these are not rolled off at all. Very balanced. Uh, Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. First uh, uh, track off that record is called So What? The symbol accuracy and decay and tonally sounding like it's in the room was so good on these speakers. So good. Like, so I just remo removed, I just reviewed the uh, Emotiva Air Mode of B1 Plus. And it has a ri folded ribbon tweeter. Now, that, that speaker, I don't believe is as accurate as this speaker. Okay, that colors the treble a bit. Not in a bad way, actually, in a very fantastic way. These, I don't feel like you're coloring the treble at all. At higher volumes, the treble can become pr more pronounced, but I think tonally, these do a fantastic job with treble. Excellent. Excellent. Can be a little bright at 
higher volumes, but to be fair, most speakers in this category are that way. What are my final thoughts? My final thoughts on this speaker is number one, it is the best speaker that you can get for, for $200 or less. Yep, best speaker you can get for $200. I wish I had this speaker to compare because I did a best speaker in a $200. And it was, I kind of picked the Fluence and I kind of picked the Sony SSCS5. These are better and not a little bit better. These are a lot better than those speakers in the aggregate, in totality. Extremely balanced from the base to the mids to the highs. It, there is nothing to pick apart here to me. They're, they're remarkable in their neutrality as in their so I often talk about the X factor in a speaker, like the Emotivas have an X factor, the Kef Q150 have an X factor, the Elac debut first generation have an X factor. So there's a, sometimes an intangible thing that isn't really measurable um, that, may, in my opinion, makes a speaker stand out amongst its uh, competition. With these. The X factor is that there is no X factor and it's remarkably balanced across everything. Everything is well behaved. Everything is there. Everything does exactly what it's supposed to do when it's supposed to do it. While this may not have the magic of the first generation, it has the magic simply because all of the issues that the first generation had are completely erased with this. So it's up to you. If the X factor is you're going to have an extremely three-dimensional experience, but the, the sound is not going to be um, as tonally balanced or as accurate, then the first gen is for you. If you want a speaker that is nearly flawless in its balance, tonality, ability to make um, enough bass to be pleasing and not need to have a subwoofer out of a five and a quarter, this is your speaker. Also, I rarely run a sub when I test speakers because I just want to hear what how they can do. The interesting thing for me is instead I added a sub to these because I was really enjoying the music and and when I enjoy it, when I listen for pleasure, I added a little bit of a sub on the low end. So I added the sub and immediately they became warm. Okay, so I dialed the sub down. And normally when I add a sub, it just kind of adds extension. For whatever reason, and I can't really explain it, when I added a sub to these, they immediately leaned to the warm side to the point where I was wanting more treble. And I found that quite interesting. So you can, in a strange way, affect the treble response with these simply by adding a sub. I don't quite understand it. I don't, I don't understand it. I think it probably has something to do with where the frequency responses are, roll off all sorts of things, you know, uh, crossover in the, in the subwoofer and things like that. But that was a new experience for me that I've never had before. Um, I think I covered everything. It's very polite. It's very well behaved. It is the... Mm, I don't even know how to describe it. It's the, um, it's the kid in high school that did everything right. And you're kind of mad at him. Because they're always getting good grades. Great at sports. Always have the good looking girlfriend. Or the good looking boyfriend. Um... They're kind of like, I resent them for how good they are. But I enjoy it because of how good they are. If you're looking for the best balanced and best sounding speaker for $200 or less, this is it. 
It's it. It's remarkable. I'm so glad that I got them sent to me by accident. Otherwise, I never would have reviewed them. Um, 6.2s are coming in tomorrow. This is going to be part of the... Uh, it's probably going to be the Sunday speaker shootout this week. So this is going to be part of that. And it actually kind of makes a lot of sense because this is a five and a quarter inch. The Emotivas are a five and a quarter inch. The Kefs are a five and a quarter inch. The uh, Qs are five and a quarter inch. So that's going to be a very good comparison. However, what this has going for it is this cheaper than all those other speakers and not by an insignificant amount. This is $200. The Kefs are on sale for $300. So there's a big, big gap in there, okay? So with that, if you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, enter the speaker giveaway. Uh, after we hit 1,000 subscribers, I think I'm going to do another little promotion uh, where, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Um, I do have a Patreon, and I have three people contributing, and that is humbling. Um, so next video, I'm going to mention those three people, not with their last names for anonymity purposes, but I'm going to mention them. So thank you. If you're contributing to me on Patreon, I thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart. I have a lot of other videos that you can check out. Um, Emotiva, that was fun review, fun speaker, Kef, uh, Q150, fun review, fun speaker, a lot of reviews. So check out some of my other videos, please, if you like. And if you like my style, if you like my attitude, subscribe. Maybe tell a friend about it. Who knows? I don't. So thanks for coming in today. I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.